So, how many of you have ever been kicked before? <laughs> Raise your hands, you, no, 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 no. All right. How, how many of you have been punched before? Uh, you, okay, you, all right. Oh, uh, you've been punched before. Oh, uh, just in the arm, gotcha. How many of you have been kneed in the face before? No, okay. How many of you have been grabbed by your arm, flipped over your head onto your back? Yeah, one person in the back. Cool. How many of you have had your legs grabbed and then you fill yourself up in the air and then everything shifts and then you're upside down and the earth is getting close to you at a fast rate of speed. <laughs> I have. Those are a lot of things that have happened to me or I have done to people in the fight game. That's, it just is what it is. In mixed martial arts fighting, if you all do not know, I had a, um, was it 20 year? Well, no. I will have been in mixed martial arts for 20 years this year. Uh, it is 2003. In November, no, I'm sorry. November 2003, no, that's when football was born. August 2003 is when I signed up at Bama Boxing and Mixed Martial Arts Uh in Elizabeth, New Jersey. There were two instructors there. One was Big Dan Mergliata. And the other was Eddie Rowland. Smiling Eddie Rowland. You can Google uh, both of those individuals. And I embarked my journey of Punching, kicking, elbowing, submitting, head kicking, body kicking, leg kicking, kneeing. That journey was a very interesting one. Oh, yeah. I still remember, uh, what was it? Par Parchich? Parchichich? is in Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey. There's this guy I was fighting. I shot in for a takedown. I'm not a wrestler. Learned pretty good wrestling te technique from uh, Timmy Hands and a lot of my other training partners. But I shot in for a takedown, and he timed it, kneed me in the face. Boo! Just heard all of this ringing. It's funny, I... Uh, my little chunk now, if he's looking for something, he'll go like this. He must have seen it on one of his shows or something. They were using uh, binoculars or something like that. But he would go like this. Well, in that fight versus Pacharchich, per I, I got to go uh, look online and see what that guy's name is. Uh, but... When he kneed me in the face, uh, if any of you have seen, uh, what is his name, uh, what, from the Avengers, Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange movie, you remember when the mystical one hit him in his chest and it, then it just completely separated him, his body was here, the different levels of consciousness uh, was back behind him, that's what happened to me when uh when i got need in the face and what i experienced was this loud high pitch ringing in my ears it's like a, a a tone almost like you were doing a sound test like uh beep that air beep that air beep 
that ear, but it was the entire time. And I'm standing behind myself looking through a hole in my head and all I can see was through my eyes like this. I see him moving, throwing punches at me, but I'm back behind myself trying to get my body to move, but I'm all I could see is my eyes moving, well, me moving back behind my eyes trying to regain control of my body. I didn't drop uh, or anything like that. I had my hands up, was trying to back up. And when I recovered, I shot back in for another takedown, took him down and beat the crap out of him, finished the fight. That's what happened in that, uh, that situation. I was lucky. I didn't come out with any brain damage. <laughs> Thought about Eddie Rowland. Uh, what does he say? Uh, no, I don't have any uh, drain bramage. That's one of his bad jokes that he does. He was doing dad jokes uh, 20 years ago. Hey, Eddie Rowland, everyone. He's doing stand-up comedy right now. Uh, but there are so many different traumatic events that happen in my fight career that I did to people, that people did to me. And I am not seeing any... Uh, any long-term effects from it right now. Doing good. Feeling good. Feeling strong. Feeling confident. I'm trying to always uh, keep myself within those lines. So I'm not feeling so good that it's like, oh, well, hey, I still got a little bit in the tank left. Maybe I should go take a fight. No, 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 no. No, uh, -uh. I don't want, well, I want to feel that good, but I don't want to feel that good because I want to stay married. Now, um, there were quite a few people, a lot of them that I, I never followed up with or tried to see how their life is going now that after they fought me, they were tired. They recognize this isn't the game they want to play anymore. Like, no, I'm, I'm done. They, even if they won the fight, they took a major ass whooping. Still got the referee's decision. But they realized this wasn't the game for them. I would bring so much energy, so much drive and determination, such an ass whooping to people that is like, no, I'm, I, I, eh, if they lost, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, uh, that's it for me. I'm retiring now. I, I'm I'm done with this game, and if they won, they also recognize like no, like I beat this guy, and I'm hurting in the hospital, and he's walking around fine, like there's no no problem. I like, I don't have it for this game. I don't have the heart for this game. The leg kicks that I took, I I. Speaking as them, they weren't able to walk for a month. The, the punches that they took. Face, face didn't heal up for multiple months. I would break people's soul. There are a few times 
I, I broke people's tendons. There's this one fight of mine where uh, the guy that I was fighting, well, see, I I am a a nice guy that is filled with violence. So I was given the opportunity uh, to fight this one guy. His name was Willie Brown. And remember I spoke about it before. Big Dan Mergliata, the referee, he knew about the direction that my camp was going in. And we were um, we were a submission-driven camp. In-game combat sports academy. Led by Eddie Rowland. Like once the... Uh, once we all went in separate directions, started to see what we would do. Uh, Dan, when he refereed me versus uh, Hercules Benjamin, caught Hercules in a standing rear naked choke. And he went out while he was still standing. I didn't know. But I don't think that I was holding him up. And... Dan told me to uh, break, so I'm there with the choke in, and Dan taps me the, to break, I start to slowly do it, and then I realize that he's out, and before I could get my other arm off of him, Dan grabs me, and then with one arm, launches me across the cage. Like, uh, oops, I... Didn't know. So, in uh, in this fight, uh, when Dan was my referee again, he uh, he said that, "Hey, let's be safe out there. Uh, if you get someone into a submission hold, make sure that you give them the opportunity to tap." And that's not the way that my uh, my camp uh, would deal with things. And from uh, Tom Velasquez, which went on to uh, which went on to create Lucky Devil Fight Club, which my fight club is directly under. Uh, Full Metal Fight Club. You can find us on Instagram. Speaking of that, I got to post the um, training pictures from yesterday. So, in that fight with Willie Brown, uh, we're going through it, fighting all over the place. You all could go, uh, go look it up on YouTube. It's... Is it on? No, it's not on my YouTube channel. Plenty of my fights are, but if you just search my name, I uh, and either J Dudley and C S or J A Dudley versus Willie Brown, it'll come up. And I w rolled into a heel hook, so I have his heel hook there, and I'm waiting. For him to tap. I have it nice, snug, and secure. I look up at Dan. Dan is there ready and waiting to stop it. And then Tom is in the um, in my corner yelling, like, take the leg, take the leg. And then I look back at Willie Brown, and he sits up and punches me in the face. Okay. Crack. Well, tell your knee surgeon I said you're welcome because I completely destroyed his knee. He was another one that never fought again. Looked uh, a few times to see if anything ever... Um, like, if he he ever uh, fought again, 
I didn't see his name while I was still competing. <sighs> but he had the opportunity, and it shows in this game, you never know when your number is coming up. Because you could have slipped, got caught, boom. And then after that, your, your trigger is set. Once you start um, just getting touched and then you're uh, knocked out unconscious. I never had that problem, uh, but it's, it's something that happens to fighters to where their body goes into, into like a panic mode or automatic shutdown mode to where there's absolutely nothing that you can do, but nothing you can do to get back from that. Once that button is hit, you just boom like that, go off, just drop. <laughs> Auto protect mode, drop. Like those, um, those goats, you know, the little goats that are hopping around and you say, hi goat, they go, eh, and then just fall over no matter what. Like, hey, look, there's a goat. I don't know what the name of those goats are, but they're funny. <laughs> They'll just be hopping along. They'll walk, 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 walk. Step on a stick. The stick will crack. They're going, eh. <laughs> if you haven't seen those goats, you need to go look them up. But. I am so glad that I never developed that. Never got real punchy or anything, meaning that my speech changed because of my activity in the cage or my activity training, getting punched in the face repeated, repeatedly for years. Never developed a speech impediment or trouble thinking I still have all of my faculties and don't have any issues forming a thought or anything like that I'm so grateful for that every submission that I got put in I either figured out a way or I knew my limits and I I tapped like plenty of Cruz when I fought him it's like I have so many defenses for arm bars, but for some reason, he got me locked out. My body just went into panic mode. I didn't roll through. I didn't uh, change the angle of my thumb, anything like that. I felt trapped, so I, I tapped. Still still have my elbow intact. So. I made it out of that. Out of that career. The fight game. Many didn't. Many paid with their lives. Many pay with their lives just off of making weight, not getting punched in the face, not uh, getting choked out, not uh, um, having a, a, a bad submission. No, many just trying to cut weight, make weight, fighting that scale. So many have lost the battle to the scale and so many have lost their lives battling for that scale i'm so happy that i didn't i was a heavyweight i was walking around at 285 i would have to cut down to 265 get on the scale 265.5 made weight time to go eat when i was 205 went well the one time that i fought at 205 Earlier that day, I was 225. 
I cut down because they they gave me a pound, uh, like a pound leeway. I was 225 at the start of that day. Got down to 206 within a few hours. Got on a scale, made weight, started to rehydrate. A few hours after that, started to eat. Then, then went to sleep, rested, got up the next day, worked out a little bit, ate again, was feeling good, ate again, hydrating, ate again. And by fight time, I was 237. So I went from 225 to 206 to 237. All within 48 hours. Less than 48 hours. Some people don't make it out from that. Some people that don't even compete. Because they're not being clean will develop a staph infection. Like, oh, getting all sweaty and rolling with people. Somebody brings their dirty funk on the mats. Then you get a little pimple or something on your arm. Like, oh, yeah, it's nothing. Maybe an ingrown hair or something like that. Then two days later, you have a hole in your arm. Why? Oh, because staph infection does not care. You need to wash a dirty butt. I made it out from that. Some things that I didn't make it out. I had a, um, well, I, I, I can say that I did make it out because I don't have those injuries anymore. I used to have bad tennis elbow on this arm. You could punch this arm and it'd be fine. You go like that. I'm dropping to the ground. Made absolutely no sense. Blocking punches, boom, getting hit, doing pad work and stuff. And then uh, the pad holder just would graze my hand and I would drop to the ground in pain. That went on for about two years. <laughs> Couldn't understand it. Couldn't let it, I mean, it wouldn't heal. It, and then just one day it stopped. But I'm grateful, grateful for the experience, grateful for the time, grateful for the opportunities, grateful for the memories, and especially grateful that I made it out. Shalom.